We left off with the pancreas creating amylase, and this is to digest carbohydrates like starch. Uh, last type of a digestive enzyme are things called, you know, ribonucleases, and also deoxyribonucleases. And this would take, you know, RNA digested and turn it into its monomers. So, you know, smaller fragments. And this would take DNA digested and turn it into its smaller fragments. You know, into the pieces of nucleic acid. This would be a, you know, ribonucleotide. This would be a deoxy a ribonucleotide. Deoxyribonucleotide. Okay, and this uh, ribonucleotide has, you know, three components, a ribose sugar, a nitrogenous base, so a nitrogenous base. And here we have a uh, phosphate, the acid parts of our molecule. For ribonucleotides, both have the OH down here. So this monomer for deoxyribonucleotide, you know, same thing, nitrogenous base. But uh, one of these OHs are missing. But this would be the monomer for that. This also has, you know, a phosphate group chilling there. Okay, so now on to the liver. The first function is to create bile, bile salts. And this is to aid in lipid digestion. Lipid digestion. You know, this helps, you know, organize the lipids, organize, it also helps digest further, it helps in absorption, absorption of lipids. So I want to say here, you know, C pancreas from the previous video. Okay, second function of the liver is it takes you know, if we have excess glucose, we want to store some of that for future use. So let's say we have, you know, a couple of these floating around. These are going to combine in the liver and create something called glycogen. This is glycogen. Glycogen, this is a storage form for animals. Okay, so this process of creating glycogen, we call this glycogen, glycogenesis, which means, you know, uh, glycogen, you know, refers to glycogen, this genesis part means creation. So we are creating glycogen. Okay. Your liver can also do the reverse reaction. You know, if we have, if our body is low on glucose, it's going to take glycogen and break them up so we can send glucose into our body so it can go to whichever tissue it needs to go to. So we can take this, chop it up into glucose. And now it is in the right size to be able to exit and travel into our, let's say we have some tissue here that needs oxygen, uh, glucose, tissue here that needs that and so forth. So now we can send it to our bloodstream and send glucose wherever it needs to be sent. This reverse process of breaking up uh, glycogen, we call this glycogenolysis. Glycogen, you know, refers to glycogen. This lysis part means, you know, you break up. Means your break up. Uh, your body, the liver can also take, 
you know, other sources. So we can actually take, to create glucose, we can take, you know, amino acids. We can also take, you know, non-hexose, like glucose would be a hexose, non-hexose carbs. And we can use this to create ourselves glucose. But this would be, you know, when the hepatic stores are depleted. Hepatic, you know, just refers to liver. We can create glucose from these two. And this process of creating glucose like this, we call this gluconeogenesis. Which means, you know, making new glucose. So, you know, neo just means new. Genesis means creation and gluco means glucose. So we're creating new glucose. Okay. Uh, your liver can also take, you know, excess protein and excess carbs, and it could store it as triglycerides and fatty acids. And this is for energy storage. For energy storage. Okay, and you'll store it in your adipose tissue. Uh, last important function of your liver is, you know, protein metabolism. So we know protein is composed of, you know, amino acids. So protein is just, you know, many, many, many amino acids put together. Let me draw one of them for you. So there's this. There is this group, and there's this, this part. So here is the, you know, amine group. And, you know, your liver is going to break this down into ammonia. Into ammonia. But ammonia is, you know, excess, too much of it is toxic. It's toxic to your body. You go, it can cause, you know, damage to your central nervous system, CNS. It also interferes interferes with the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria. So no good. We have to clear this from, we have to clear this out of our body. So what your liver will do, your liver again is going to convert this into urea. And notice the similarity in these structures. We have an NH2 group, you have an NH2, NH2. So this guy here is urea. This is, you know, less toxic, but still needs to be cleared from the body. This will go to the kidneys for uh, excretion. So we'll go to the kidneys for excretion. Kidneys for excretion. Uh, it's a polar compound, so it can travel, you know, soluble in the blood plasma can travel to get to the kidneys. Okay, so now on to the stomach. So let me, uh, let me, okay, let's see. So um, it's covered in a, you know, one of the layers is the mucus layer, and this is, you know, rich, uh, you know, it secretes, and it's rich in bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, which is this ion right here. You know, why do we want it to be, you know, rich in this base, in this bicarbonate? And again, this is to, you know, two functions is, you know, it acts as a lubricant. But most importantly, you know, it protects the stomach from a, you know, hyperacidic environment you know, protects the lining from, you know, an acidic environment. So it doesn't, you know, burn through, and destroy all of your good tissue, the tissue that we need. And again, this works by, you know, if there's, you know, carbonate floating around, bicarbonate, and there are acids, you know, in the environment, 
like so, there's going to be a reaction. This is going to sop up some of these protons. So again, we have, you know, less free floating protons, you know, now we have a less acidic pH. So stomach is coated in bicarbonate. Uh, one of the secretions of your stomach uh, is pepsin. And this is for protein digestion. But for this to work, uh, it's Pepsin on its own is in, a, is in an inactive form called pepsinogen. This is the inactive form. In an inactive form, we can call this a zymogen. Zymogen. And for this to activate into pepsin, the active form. So pepsin, this is the active form. And so it can begin digesting protons. We need um, the help of an acidic pH. And this is, uh, so your stomach is going to produce HCl, an acid. Produce HCl. This is, you know, hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid. And this is to activate... This acidic pH will activate, you know, your zymogens. And it can also, you know, deactivate, you know, slash destroy, you know, things like bacteria. Okay, so let's take a look at, you know, pepsinogen. Uh, its optimal range is you know 1.8 to 3.5 you know pH this is the of uh, um, this is the optimal range range of pepsin uh, to about five from this range you know you can it can be reversibly reversibly inactivated But then uh, pH is, you know, too high, 7 to 8. From here, it's irre irreversibly. Irreverse. Irreversibly um, inactivated. So from that point, we cannot, you know, renature this, this enzyme. So this just goes to show that... You know, enzymes have an optimal range of performance. Optimal pH and temperature pH range. And, you know, placing it in a drastically different environment, you know, will cause denaturation. You know, a significant... change in pH will cause denaturation denaturation okay uh, so quickly for some let me finish this up in the next video